So, um, yesterday I called my mother um, just to check up on her, see how her Good Friday was, because my mother, she's 80, and you know how 80-year-olds are. Um, they get wild, so I want to make sure she went to Good Friday. And um, so I asked, how was your Good Friday service? And she said, oh, I had a great Good Friday. Now, that surprised me because, um, and this is going to sound cruel, but I've been to her parish, and her priest is a very good guy, but painfully boring. Um, <laughs> so, like, I was thinking, wow, he, he knocked the ball out of the park. So I said, well, what did, what did you know, the, your priest say? And she said, oh, it had nothing to do with him. I don't know what he said. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> but, <laughs> anyhow. She was at this other, she belongs to these little church groups, and this one guy before Good Friday, or before the service, was saying that he was so looking forward to Good Friday. And he said because, he said, um, Good Friday really celebrates, in this odd part, his life in this way, that he stories this, is that years ago he said um, his sister was diagnosed with cancer, and um, she had a son that was uh, going to graduate from high school, and so the guy said he prayed and prayed and prayed that, um, you know, her, his sister wouldn't die or at least stay alive long enough to see her son graduate from high school. And the worst thing happened, two months before graduation, the nephew gets in a car accident and is killed. And then his mom didn't hang on very much long after that, and he lost his sister. So he said, you know, he was so angry with God, he gave up his religion, um, gave up his faith, just he prayed, God didn't answer his prayer, that was it. And he spent years becoming slowly more and more angry. And the odd part is he was a counselor until one day he's counseling somebody and somebody says, you're more angry than I am. You need to see a counselor. And he was stunned. Um, and he realizes, yes, he's been harboring a lot of anger. So he goes to counseling, and over time, actually, he regains his faith. And he said, he said, so Good Friday is really my day. Um, I was reborn, where, you know, he recognized how dead he was in his anger. And he said, now, and this is the good part, he said, now, he says on Easter, he said, I feel more connected to my sister, more than that. I feel connected to other people. I'm in love with life. And I feel even very close to my sister and my nephew now. And like my mother said, that just changed her day. And that when Good Friday happened, she was really praying that she could leave her old self behind. And I'm listening to this story, and I'm like, me too. <laughs> um, and I love that story. And the story to me depicts this icon, and I'm going to explain it. I saw this icon. The icon was this picture of Christ, and it's a resurrected Christ standing on a bridge. And the bridge is made out of the cross. And I saw the icon, loved it, and I said to a friend, I said, that is a great icon. And my friend said, I don't get it. Why is Jesus standing on a bridge? And so I said, well, Jesus, it's a resurrection. The resurrection is this bridge. And he didn't get it. I have got to get better friends. Um, <laughs> but it's like the story of the Good Friday man who suddenly is stunned into reali realizing that, um, oh, I forgot one thing, realizing how angry he is. And he said, and, there's another part that is great theology. I'm amazed this guy got it, where this guy said, I thought the resurrection was about returning back from the dead, returning back to life, or at least holding off death. He says, that's not the resurrection. The resurrection is a whole new life. And the new life he was talking about is that now, somehow, through his prayer life, and I believe this, you are mystically connected to everyone in the world. You're connected to those who have died. You're connected more in life. Uh, that's the resurrection. Theologically, his, he's right. A lot of people, they think the resurrection is returning from the dead. It's not. The resurrection is Christ. It's a brand new life where we're connected 
to God and all of life and all people, dead or alive. That's the power of the resurrection. And so the reason why Christ is standing on a bridge is like this guy. He was the Good Friday guy who was angry with life and disconnected. Then now he's a type who feels he's a resurrected Easter guy. Where the resurrection happened in him. It's not returning from the dead. It's really a brand new life. Do you get the idea that the resurrection is this bridge into a whole new life? And that's what we're here to celebrate. And in the gospel, same point. In the gospel, you have Peter, who Mary Magdalene early in the morning sees that the tomb is empty, runs back, tells Simon Peter. When it says Simon Peter, you know he's in this transition from Simon to Peter. Peter's a good... And Peter, Simon Peter and the beloved disciple run to the tomb. And the beloved, well, Peter looks in the tomb, and he doesn't get it. The tomb is empty. He doesn't get it. He's stunned. And the point of today's story is that it's just the beginning. The same way that the guy was stunned when the other person says, you need counseling. This is when Peter is faced with the mystery, and he's stunned. And you know how it's going to end. Because um, the first reading was Peter afterwards, where Peter, he sees the resurrected Christ. And Peter... On this side, on Good Friday, you know he's a coward. He is controlled by fear and denied Christ. But you know, at the end of his life, Peter makes this transition. He crosses the bridge, and he ends up being actually quite brave. The guy who was a coward ends up actually as a martyr, giving his life away. Um, And the first reading alludes to that, that he now sees Christ fully alive because now Peter is fully alive. And the other character is the beloved disciple. And the beloved disciple plays us. That's why it's unnamed. And the beloved disciple, this is key, on Holy Thursday, he lays his head on the heart of Jesus. If you remember the Last Supper, and with his head on the heart of Jesus, he looks out and he sees the world like Christ does. And so the beloved disciple, who sees the world with love, When he sees the empty tomb, he immediately gets it. And the beloved disciple will see, like Peter eventually, the presence of Christ everywhere. What we're playing is that we're the beloved disciple. That the resurrection has happened in us, and now we can see the presence of Christ everywhere. Now we see that we live in this mystical communion. We're not cut off. The old person that we worked on for 40 days in Lent, whether it be anger or whatever. Hopefully that's dead. And now what we're celebrating is that we have this whole new life. Christ was resurrected in us. We become, we hope, a new person. So for the next 50 days, we celebrate that we're entering into life. For 40 days, we celebrated and looked at what was examining, what was killing us, For 50 days, we pray that we move into this mystical communion, that we cross the bridge of the resurrection and become completely new people, people who, like this guy, completely in love with life. And so we do this with little rituals. Like one is in a few minutes, we're going to all stand and renew your, your baptismal vows. We do that every Easter. And then we'll take holy water and we'll sprinkle it everywhere. Hopefully it won't burn. Um, and what that symbolizes is that where, where the water hits is all the places you can find the presence of, of God, the presence of Christ. It hits me, it hits you. The presence of Christ is resurrected in me, in you, and we could see it everywhere. That's what that ceremony means. Or even like the Easter thing of um, hiding eggs which, by the way, we're doing after Mass for the little kids. For the little kids, not for the deacons. Um, So we'll start that after Mass, but we hit them in the courtyard. Um, And the egg is this actually very ancient symbol of life. And it's this idea that we can see the life of Christ hidden all over the place. Or the Easter bunny. Somebody asked me last week what the... What does the bunny have to do with Easter? 
Well, the bunny is actually this ancient symbol of fertility and life. If you don't get that, check with your local veterinarian. Um, <laughs> but it's really not about the bunny. It's about the lamb. Um, if you notice, the lamb was sacrificed on Passover. But then if you look in the book of Revelation, the lamb in heaven lives, the slain but living lamb of God. And the lamb of God gathers all people together, unites all people together. The lamb is the resurrection, and the lamb feeds everyone. Um, it's not about the bunny. It's about the lamb. And what we're praying is that really, like the same guy, my, same way my mother met this guy, we're praying at Easter time, this great mystery happens inside of us, that we move into the resurrection, that we become new people connected to each other, connected to life, connected to each other, connected to those in heaven, that we become this new person, uh, that the resurrection is this bridge that has led us into a whole new way of life.